Hi and welcome to a measurement video exploring the perimeter of a sector. So to find the perimeter of a sector we know, need to know a few terms. We'll just remind ourselves of a few terms of a circle. So an arc is a smaller part of the circumference of a circle. So that's the, that bit in red there is, the, is an arc because it's one part a smaller part of the circumference. It's not the whole way around, so that's called an arc, that red bit. Now, a sector. It's an area of a circle formed by two radii. Remember, radii is just the plural of radius, so two radiuses and an arc. I'll show you on a diagram. You've got one radius and another radius and that part of the circumference that goes between them so that blue bit there is uh, forming what we call a sector. It's formed by two radiuses or two or two radii and an arc. So that blue bit, we're, we're going to try and find the perimeter of that blue pathway all around the edge of the sector in this particular video. So the perimeter here is made up of an arc length. So that big, thick blue line that you can see around the edge we're going to find the length of that and we'll need to add a radius and another radius. So if you follow my pen here uh, we'll have to find the length of that arc around there and we've got a special formula to do that and for a full perimeter around that sector we have to add a radius and another radius. So quite a bit to do here. Now that arc length, let's have a look at that section. This is how to find that big thick blue line that goes around part of the edge of the circle there. Now what happens, has to happen is we have theta over 360. Now theta, that theta is an angle symbol and we'll take that angle size from the center of the circle. In our questions we'll have a number there and we'll put it on top of that fraction over 360 degrees. So that theta is the center angle of the sector and so that pi over 360. Now why is 360 there? Well you know that it's 360 deg degrees all the way around a circle. So if we went all the way around it would be 360 degrees. But if we've got part of a circle that angle will represent um, the, the part of the circle that's making up the sector. So what, has, what happens is that theta over 360 really ends up representing what fraction of a full circle we have in that sector. Alright, so as well as that, as well as putting the angle from the sector over 360, we'll also multiply by 2 pi r. Now we saw from a previous video that 2 pi r, or 2 times pi times r, is the formula for the circumference of a circle all the way around. So we have the fraction of the circle that we have in the sector here, and we're multiplying it by the formula for the full circumference. So that'll work well to find just a part of the circumference. We have a fraction that represents how much of a full circle we've got. We're multiplying it by the circumference formula that we saw in a previous video. And we'll also have to add a radius and another radius. So that, uh, this first bit is uh, involved in finding the distance around the arc, the big thick blue bit. We'll need also to read off what the size of that radius is and the size of that radius is. And so can you see from those three parts that we've got the whole thing covered here. We've, uh, we've got the distance around the full sector. All right, so that's what we've got to do. Arc length plus a radius and another radius. Let's have a look at a bit of an example. We've been given a, a sector here in blue, similar shape to the last one, and we've got now an angle at the center, 110 degrees, and that tells us uh, how big that sector is, or how wide that angle is anyway. And we've got two radiuses, a radius here, 5 meters, and another radius of 5 meters, and we could expect those two to be the same. Uh, in any circle, the distance between the center to any part of the edge will be the same. Okay, now here's our formula from the previous slide. We've got theta over 360 times 2 pi r. Now that r in the uh, circumference formula there represents a radius as well, so we've got a lot of radiuses in here. Okay, 
So, what did we say goes on top of the 360? Well, 360 is a, is a degree, so we'll put a degrees up there. So that angle from the center of the sector just goes straight up and gets put in the top of the fraction in that part of the arc length formula. We'll then multiply it by 2 and pi, and that r is a radius. Now, what's the radius over here? 5 meters. Okay, so there will be a 5 in there. And we'll have to add a radius as well, and another radius, and that's uh, also going to be 5. So we're using that 5 a lot. The radius goes kind of in three spots here. So let's remind ourselves in an algebra type way when we're when we have things beside each other in mathematics they're actually uh, invisibly multiplying with each other so we'll remember that when we put this into our calculator we'll do 110 over 360 on our fraction button multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi which is also on our calculator multiplied by 5 <laughs> and then we'll just add another 5 and another 5 so when we do all that on our calculator we'll get a final answer of 19.6 meters if we rounded it off to one decimal place. Let's have a quick recap. The angle from the center went in the top of our formula there. Uh, the radius length actually went in there and there and again there. <laughs> so we're following that top line, that top formula. We're just subbing in uh, the radius length and the size of the angle in the right spots and using our calculator to do most of the work for us. Alright, let's have a look at another example. Now here's a sector. We haven't got the full circle sort of pictured, but if we're told it's a sector in the question, we'll be able to trust that. It's part of a, an arc. Our arc is over here. If I could write properly with my fancy pen. That's the arc around the edge of a circle here and we could call that 8 and that 8 uh, radiuses and we've got an angle at the center we can use so we'll just fill in the formula really with all the numbers from the question alright so the angle we've got this time is 52 degrees so it'll go on top there we will multiply by 2 and pi from the formula what's r for radius this time it's 8 kilometers so we'll multiply that by an 8 and we've also got to add an 8 and add another 8 if we want to go all the way around. Okay, so we're just following that formula, putting in the numbers in the next line down. We'll remind ourselves that in that section, this section here of the formula, when things are beside each other, we make sure we put a multiply into our calculator in those two bits there. So if we typed all that into our calculator, I'm hoping you're going to get what I get, 23.26 metres if we rounded it off to two decimal places. So interesting, that's a pretty big sector, that one, 8 kilometres, and we've got the angle in the middle. So all we're really doing, it's, it's, a, it's a bit easier than it looks really. Once we know this uh, arrangement, this formula here, which gives us the perimeter of the sector, we're finding the distance around that, that, oh, that red line there. All, all the way around that section. Uh, we're just putting the right numbers in the right spots and letting our calculator do the work. Okay, so um, to find the perimeter around a sector, the distance around a sector, we've got a section that involves the arc length. We've got a section that finds one of the radiuses and, well, that'll be the same size as the other radius anyway, but we'll just piece all that together and that helps us find the perimeter of a sector. Alrighty, and that's the formula there, and we just uh, saw two good examples there, so I'm hoping that helps, and have a look at the video again if you're not sure. It's a bit of a tricky formula, but really there's not a lot of spots where we can go wrong. We put the angle in the angle spot, and then the rest of them are all filled up with the length of the radius. We're just putting it in three different spots. Okay, hope you have some success there, and that's the idea for the perimeter of a sector. And uh, thanks for watching that video, and we've got lots of videos at uh, peterblakemaths.com. Uh, see you next time for some more measurement videos. Thanks for listening. Bye.